Thank you very much. And now, Mr. Agno. I do feel that we are um, anticipating an enormous rush of cloned products onto the marketplace. Now, I think that's very, very unlikely. If you look at why does a, a farmer want to clone an animal, it's because he considers that animal is very, very high quality and therefore wants all his other animals to be just like that. But it won't work like that because somewhere in the world somebody will have bred something that's a little bit better and his clone immediately becomes second best. And that's likely to keep happening. And the expense of producing a clone and the problems, and I quite acknowledge there are problems in doing it with increased mortality, etc., will almost certainly water down or even completely negate any economic advantage of the clone. But when you're talking about descendants of clones, you've got to ask yourself, well, why isn't that descendant a clone? If that was supposed to be the very best, why dilute it with other genes? Why do that? I can't see why a farmer would want to do that. So I think we are worrying about something that isn't actually going to happen. But I would like to leave everyone with this thought. We know now that people move around the world very quickly and inadvertently they move animal diseases with them. And they may come from parts of the world where farm animals are completely immune to a particular problem but elsewhere in the world, the animals are not. They are very naive to it, very susceptible to it. Just think about ash dieback or even the varroa mite with bees. Now, it could be possible that there is a serious problem in Asia and it spreads like wildfire into Europe, but using cloning, we're able to hold the problem up. So we must always remember there can be a positive benefit to anything. Thank you. And I give immediately the floor to Ms. Chantal Brieski. Uh, for uh, the Commission. Yes, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thanks also to Mrs. Sommer for presenting the report and, of course, Mrs. Moy. Um, first of all, I would like to um, recall that the proposals have been uh, submitted to the Parliament and the Council already some time ago, in December 2013. And I can read, we can read from the many amendments that we all agree that cloning should be prohibited on the EU territory because we all agree that it causes harm to animals. This has been confirmed by the European Food Safety Authority. And we have to acknowledge that the proposals which are on the table uh, do represent a real added value to compared to the present situation. Uh, because, first of all, it creates legal certainty. Cloning will clearly be prohibited, and this is clear to all uh, the economic operators in Europe. Uh, food from clones will also be clearly prohibited, and importantly, the ban in the proposal is not limited in time. It is subject to a review based on a report by the Commission and based, of course, on uh, all scientific information and any other data the Commission will be able to collect. So it is not a prohibition which is uh, limited in time, but subject to review because we all have to acknowledge that science can develop. Science can also not develop. So we have to uh, see what is happening. Um, I think there are a number of elements which we should acknowledge uh, in a clear and uh, realistic manner. Uh, there is no animal welfare issue linked to the production of descendants of clones. These animals are clearly produced, created by the traditional techniques. I think we need to acknowledge that and that the animals which are subject to the proposals of, uh, made by the Commission are those animals which are likely to be cloned and those where there are welfare issues. So we, we have to, to our knowledge, we haven't seen any animal welfare issue linked, for example, to poultry or fish. So we gain in having a legislation which is linked and based as much as possible 
on uh, the reality, on the scientific issues, and of course on the welfare issues. Um, we also need to be aware that if we want to go further than what the Commission has proposed, we need to be absolutely aware of the proportionality principle. Uh, you know that the Commission has considered, for example, the labelling issue, and that our colleagues in DG Agriculture are now working on a study which should be available by the end of this year on the cost it would imply. Uh, based on the impact assessment we have carried out, uh, that would be considerable in terms of cost and burden on our farming, on our own farming and our own industry, if we were to introduce labelling let alone if we were to introduce um, a ban on the descendants and the food of those descendants. There is no justification to do this on linked to the treaty, for example, on welfare issues. There is no welfare linked to that. Um, finally, I would also like to say um, that the definition of cloning, uh, if we want to modify it, we should be aware that it should be linked to the asexual reproduction of animals. Uh, this is what we are talking about. It's because it is not, between inverted commas, a, a normal reproduction. EFSA has acknowledged that there were welfare issues. So the technical definition of cloning has to be very carefully uh, drafted and imply, in any event, asexual reproduction. Um, I would also like to reassure all the uh, members um, that the proposals we have put on the table, of course, cannot be subject to any compromise in the context of the TTIP. Uh, that, of course, is a no-go. And as a final remark, um, it seems, based on the amendments we have carefully studied, it seems that many of them uh, would imply an additional impact assessment. Um, they would really um, carry with them considerable burden on our farmers and our food industry. So they should really be studied uh, with much care and, of course, also be based on the relevant article of the treaty. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thanks again to the rapporteurs.